All right, thanks for coming today and uh, showing up for our practice together. Find that posture that you like. I did a sit with my environmental science class because they come in with just so much energy and they dropped right in. I didn't predict that. Um, so the work kind of is paying off. I can see it. And when you find that posture, find your breath. And it's good to find an anchor point. I've talked a lot of the three spots, the nose, the chest, the belly. And if you can pick one, that's good. That's kind of like the focus. The more interest you have in the breath, the easier it will become for you to, in any situation, to find that breath. If your eyes are closed, you're hearing, and that's okay, as long as you can try not to find a story behind what you're hearing, even my words. The mind wants you to follow those noises or those thoughts, and then you get to decide The breath is what you're going to follow, and you come back to it. And now we're going to start to explore like what thoughts come up, what sensations come up, as you're getting more and more comfortable sitting. Today I thought it'd be kind of cool to think about if you want to itch or you want to move, a sneeze is cool, you can't, can't stop that. But if the mind is convincing you that you need to shift or you'll be so much more comfortable if you scratch your nose, what would it be like if you were in charge and you said, right now it's like this. I'm going to see what would happen to that itch or thought. Just let it go. And you find that stillness. to explore the thoughts is to not tell a story about them, but just to know what they are. So if you're thinking about today, you could say planning, planning, just two words, same thing, and stop there. Catch the thought where it's at, come back to the breath. If you're in the past, somebody said something to you before school or whatever, judging, judging. If you're super excited about the weekend, there it is. Excited, excited. And then come back to the breath when you catch those thoughts. Sometimes mindfulness could be fun. 
And there's like a game I play when I'm having trouble and the thoughts keep coming up. I'm gonna count the breaths. The first one in is one, the second one out is two, the next one in is three. And what you could do, you could try to go all the way to 10 without being interrupted with a thought. Or I've been doing it lately with just going to five. And if I make it all the way to five without a thought, I start again. <clears throat> Give that a shot. And you could do like a one, if it's a long breath. You could do a short one, two, whatever you want. going through it and got interrupted by a thought of like something important to you at that moment it's not a penalty you just go back to one with an open heart like yeah that that happened big deal I'm gonna start again Every moment in your life is going to be different. Nothing will ever be the same. My sit last ni last week was just super sad. And then I got some good news about Ryan Joseph, the person who'd hurt his neck. I was sad about that he's healing. And he may be able to breathe again on his own. So I'm, I'm happy now about that. Last week I wasn't so sure. This week I was a little nervous about my st my nose is kind of stuffed up, so I sound funny to me. Big deal. That's all stories I tell, right? So every moment is going to be different. Create space for that. Let you know this. If you're ever feeling like you're not good enough, or it's never going to be better, and you realize like it's going to be better the next moment, it's all up to me how you greet this moment. It's your choice. Really like to thank this room, the school, you guys really brought it today. Feeling it. Keep it up and have a great Friday. Huh? Talk about timing. <laughs> you just made it, bro. Well, I must say, I'm impressed with your energy. You guys are pretty, pretty impressive. Anything come up that anybody wants to throw out? I was kind of having like a floaty sensation. I don't know where that came from. I was like, whoa, that was weird. Has anyone ever had that? Kind of like... You've had it? Yeah. Anyone else? Anything that you're feeling? It's funny. Yeah. Did you try the counting? Yeah. Did it stay bouncy? It helped. Now, the fun thing to explore was the bouncy your body doing it, or was it the mind? It was one of the body. 
Okay, so explore that. Because sometimes it's you think it's the body that's going to make you itch, but it it could be the mind too. And I you know like does that make sense? There's kind of like you have the mind where all the thoughts come from. And I ask kids, are you your thoughts? Some kids are so identified with their thoughts that they think that's true. And then I always say, if you're your thoughts, then who's the person that sees those thoughts? You know, if you're having all these thoughts when you're meditating and you catch them. Who, what's the who? Who just caught that thought that was going right? So a lot of great teachers say that the mind and the body are totally different things. So the practice is kind of learning how to reel in that thinking mind. And then when you guys are under, because you feel like you're in a lot of stress now, and me and Miss Good here, you know, you know, be nice. <laughs> it's it gets stressful, and the SATs are all over it. They want you guys to do well on those tests, right? We want to really be able to judge your abilities. And one of the number one things that they're having kids do now is the mindfulness. Because you're going to be in that really long test and you need to keep calm when you're freaking out. And they're going to kind of ask you to stay with your breath and know that it's going to be okay as soon as you turn the page. Because that page is not going to be this page, right? Any other things come up? Don't be shy. Seems like a group that would share. Yeah. It's hard. But they're also my sleepy group. No, but it's hard. Like adults, they, the teacher has to say, "Okay, done. You know, no more questions," because everybody wants to know. But they've been, they've been with these. I've been with these thoughts for almost forty-eight years, and I figured they would chill out. You know, once I got a job, I got a fat house, I got a great truck, good girlfriend, I got everything I want. No, dude, thoughts keep coming. You're not going to come to a point in your life where like, oh, now I don't have to worry about anything, right? But if you choose to like to learn how to be, on, be in charge, the body's in charge and the thoughts aren't as powerful to freak you out. That makes sense? Hope I didn't get too deep on you guys. Thanks for your practice. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mrs. Goodhue. Have a great Friday.